Bila Alhamdulillah kita bertemu sekali lagi daripada uh, Cyberview uh, Resort and Spa Cyberjaya untuk kita membawakan kepada anda majlis pelancaran bagi APEC 2020 yang insyaAllah akan dirasmikan oleh yang amat berhormat Perdana Menteri Tun Dr. Mahdi bin Muhammad dan lebih penting dengan kehadiran lebih daripada 21 anggota ekonomi yang melibatkan penyertaan dalam sepanjang tahun 2020 dengan 16,000 delegasi akan menjadi 120 mesyuarat dan insyaAllah akan diadakan di 5 buah bandar utama. Ini merupakan salah satu daripada inisiatif APEC untuk memastikan agar pembangunan ekonomi akan dapat dicapai melalui kerjasama daripada anggota ekonomi dan juga sekarang ini di pentas utama kita berikan penumpuan kepada tumpuan utama iaitu uh, ucapan perasmian yang akan disampaikan oleh Yang Amat Berhormat Perdana Menteri Tun Dr. Mahathir bin Muhammad di uh, pentas utama bersempena dengan Majlis Pelancaran APEC 2020. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to everyone. Yang berhormat Dato Ignatius Darrell Laking, Minister of International Trade and Industry, Cabinet Ministers and Deputy Ministers, APEC Foreign Missions, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that I welcome the representatives of the APEC ambas of the APEC ambassadors and high commissioners, distinguished business leaders, government officials, and all guests to the launching of APEC 2020 at this site, which has its own significance to the event. In 1998, when Malaysia first hosted APEC and I was the fourth Prime Minister then, we chose Cyberjaya for the leaders' meeting as we wanted to showcase Malaysia's multimedia super corridor, our very own hub for the future development of the ICT multimedia products and services. Cyberjaya of today has lived up to its name and is a prime location for technology-related companies as well as government agencies. We believe it is quite fitting for Malaysia to kickstart our second opportunity to host APEC at the same place as we did just over two decades ago. Ladies and gentlemen, Malaysia is proud to be hosting APEC again after 22 years. The year 2020 is indeed a significant year for APEC as it marks the end of the Bogo goals which was idealized in 1994 and had been progressively pursued by members, by member nations since. The goals were broadly targeted to see that member economies would achieve the long-term goal of free and open trade and investment in the Asia-Pacific region. According to the 2018 BOGO Goals Progress Report, tariffs have fallen. More free trade agreements are improving market access conditions for goods and services and custom reforms are making it easier, cheaper, and faster to trade. As we take on the chairmanship next year, we remain cognizant of the fact that the world right now is seeing a deficit of faith across many economies. The people are losing sight of the relevance or benefit of the prevailing global economic model due to many imbalances which have impacted their daily lives. In 1998, when we first hosted APEC, many economies in the region were taking steps to mitigate the adverse impact of the 1997 Asian financial crisis and efforts were concentrated on restoring financial stability and strengthening economic growth. However, 
the glo global economic community at that time rallied together and affirmed their first faith, their faith towards globalization as it could create, it would create more opportunities for many economies. Today, Malaysia will launch APEC 2020 against almost a similar backdrop when downside risks are continuing to build up and trade policy tensions are still with us. All these trends will continue to weaken investors' confidence, leading to the diminishing trust in the benefits of global trade and investment to the everyday people. The APEC region commands 60% of global GDP and almost 50% of global trade. With this huge market potential, we must strive to do things right and create opportunities arising from our strong base. We must acknowledge that there are inherent discontents among our citizens on basic issues such as high cost of living, housing, unemployment, and low wages. So it is also our role here in APEC to ensure that we contribute to sharing the benefits that trade can bring about to the society at large. Malaysia embraces all these challenges with a vision to ensure APEC 2020 is a success where benefits from trade, investment, and economic cooperation are felt and enjoyed by our people. At the recent ASEAN Summit in Bangkok, I call upon ASEAN member states to band together and speak with one voice in addressing global trade disputes. Likewise, APEC must be united and harness our collective strength to overcome issues and challenges, realign our faith, and charge forward. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to restore faith, we need to give meaning to our economic development efforts. We must work together towards equitable share of benefits from large corporations to small and medium enterprises right down to our citizens. As a diverse forum and an incubator of ideas, APEC is well positioned to capitalize on its strength of voluntary, non-binding, and consensus decision-making to instill and advocate more meaningful results in the global trade and investment arena. As a reality check, APEC initiatives must now move past liberalization in initiatives to be more inclusive and involve all segments of the population. APEC is important to Malaysia. The region accounts for more than 80% of our total trade and more than 70% of our foreign direct investment in the manufacturing sector. About 40% of the jobs created are directly attributable to activities linked to exports. So it is also in our interest to ensure that this region remains business friendly and that trade and investment policies bring prosperity to for all right down to the main industry. In the ASEAN, in the Asian culture, sharing of prosperity is a norm and it is a given that when something good happens to us, we share the good news by throwing a feast. In other words, prosperity sharing doesn't require a change in mindset or a philosophy that needs to be learned and adopted. It is an inherent trait among us. Malaysia has chosen the theme 
optimizing human potential towards a future of shared prosperity for APEC 2020, indicating that the philosophy underpinning this gathering is shared prosperity. When I delivered the keynote address at the CEO summit in Papua New Guinea last year, I called upon APEC carbon economies to promote the concept of shared prosperity, very much in the spirit of prosper thy neighbor call that Malaysia had made in the past. At the home front, Malaysia recently launched the Shared Prosperity Vision 2030 with the aim at creating an economy that can achieve a balanced and sustainable growth along with fair and equitable wealth distribution across income groups, ethnicities, geographical regions, and supply chains. To my mind, it is time that member economies consider embracing this philosophy and embed it in the current economic model. Improving the overall well-being of our people and enabling every citizen to have a more decent living standard will make APEC sustainable and relevant as a grouping in the long run. In other words, trade and investment narratives will move beyond the creation of wealth, jobs and development into ensuring societal well-being as well. In this regard, as host of APEC 2020, Malaysia will continue the work on women in the economy, financial inclusion, engaging youth, sustainable development, and creating a conduce, conducive environment for entrepreneurs, startups, and social enterprise, enterprises, as well as all these elements are critical components of a system that will contribute to shared prosperity. <clears throat> In realizing this vision, I strongly believe we would be more resolute, resolute if we combine our strength and pull our resources together so that we could weather any adverse adversities that come our way. Ladies and gentlemen, APEC celebrates its 30th birthday this year. For a forum that operates on the principle of voluntary, non-binding and non-consensus, the result resilience of APEC is remarkable. For an organization to be res resilient, it must continue to serve its purpose, stay re relevant, and keep up with the, the times. Every, every year, APEC leaders will travel thousands of miles across the Pacific Ocean to attend the APEC Leaders Week. That in itself shows the strong faith that we have in this organization. Certainly, Malaysia would want to keep this tradition alive. To this end, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate and thank the government and the people of Chile as the outgoing host of 20. 19 for the work done to take forward thank you for the work done to take forward the many initiatives to strengthen economic cooperation among our 21 economies like others malaysia would like to express our regret over the cancellation of chile's apec leaders meeting last month we understand the challenges faced by the government of Chile and hope that the situation in Chile will return to normalcy soon. This, however, did not negate all the good work done by Chile throughout her hosting year. In furthering Chile's commendable work, I invite all the APEC economic leaders to Malaysia 
in November 2020 to discuss the issues that matter to the resilience of APEC, the resilience of trade and investment, and the resilience of our economic well-being. The post-2020 vision for APEC, which we will launch next year, would chart the future direction of APEC towards ensuring the continued relevance under a more inclusive approach. It will be built on the BOGO goals as well as value add and complement the work of APEC over the past 30 years and preserve its status as a premier economic forum for years to come. More importantly, Malaysia would like to see the concept of shared prosperity driving the vision and the philosophy cascades to every work that APEC undertakes moving forward beyond BOGO goals. On that note, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the experience APEC 2020 and I look forward to the support of all in making APEC 2020 a success. I hereby officially launch APEC 2020. I thank you. Thank you, Honourable Tun Dr. Mahathir bin Mohammad, the Prime Minister of Malaysia. We'd like to invite you, sir, to kindly remain on stage as I would like to invite the Minister and Deputy Minister of Miti to join the Honourable Prime Minister at the launch podium. May I now invite the Honourable Prime Minister, Minister and Deputy Minister to kindly place their hands on the launch podium to initiate the launch of APAC 2020 on account of... Three, three two, two, one! Thank you, Honourable Prime Minister, Minister and Deputy Minister. We invite you to return to your seats and enjoy the launch sequence. And now, in the spirit of shared prosperity, we request the attention of the Prime Minister, guests of honour and all heads of economies at the end of the countdown. Please place your hand on the digital panel located to the right of your respective seats. Three, two, one.
Alhamdulillah dan dengan itu dengan secara rasminya dilancarkan bagi EFEK 2020 yang bermula pada bulan Disember 2019 akan berlangsung selama lebih kurang setahun bagi EPEC 2020. Ini merupakan salah satu daripada penggerak kemajuan ekonomi dan juga kemakmuran bersama yang diinginkan oleh Malaysia dan juga dengan penyertaan daripada delegasi dan juga 21 anggota ekonomi yang memberikan komitmen dan juga inisiatif mereka agar menjana dan juga memberikan pandangan setiap idea yang terbaik agar dapat merealisasikan harapan dan juga hasrat bagi EPEC 2020 yang mana kemakmuran bersama dan juga kepentingan pelaburan serta pelaburan bebas dan juga perdagangan bebas itu akan dapat dicapai. Dan sememangnya EPEC 2020 dalam ucapan yang amat berhormat Perdana Menteri adalah hasrat beliau untuk melihat penyertaan setiap anggota komuniti dan juga anggota ekonomi yang menyertai EPEC 2020 ini memberikan komitmen mereka untuk merealisasikan hasrat import dan ekspor yang lebih baik dan juga untuk menjadikan agar segala landscape ekonomi yang berlangsung dalam fenomena dan juga landscape ekonomi global dunia yang sedang berlaku sekarang ini dapat kita tangani bersama dan juga memberikan penyelesaian serta cara yang terbaik agar dapat menggerakkan ekonomi secara bersama. Dan buat masa ini, sekian saja secara langsung bagi badis pelancaran EFEK 2020 dengan harapan untuk merealisasikan dan juga untuk menjadikan setiap anggota ekonomi itu pun mendapat manfaat hasil daripada uh, setiap perkara yang telah pun dibincangkan dan juga setiap inisiatif yang telah pun dirancang dan juga dirangka. Yang amat berhormat Perdana Menteri amat optimis untuk melihat EFEK 2020 sebagai salah satu daripada batu loncatan buat Malaysia sebagai negara tuan rumah bagi EFEK 2020 agar dapat menjaga dan juga memberikan kemakmuran bersama serta mencapai hasrat dan visi bagi EPEC 2020. Sekian saja majlis pelancaran dari Cyberview Resort and Spa Cyberjaya. Kita kembali kepada rakan-rakan penyampai di Angkasa Puri. Assalamualaikum.